Monday night, Mr. Trudeau gave a speech and he was protested outside of the venue by pro-Palestinian protesters because right. of his stance on Israel. Mm -hmm. What's your take on that? How pro-Israel he is? Well, the, the problem that Canadians and other people around the world really don't want to acknowledge is that all governments do evil things. Well, the government of Israel does evil things too. All governments do because they act in a political manner that's clearly going to benefit one group over another. Well, he's back on Canadian soil, the so-called Prince of Pot, Mark Emery, interviewed by our very own Marissa SMQ, who is here with me in our studio at very early 7 a.m. Also joining us from our Ottawa studio is freelance journalist uh, Justin Ling. Justin, uh, great to have you back as well. Marissa, let me start with you. Since you did uh, wake up very early this morning. It was too early. It was too early, <laughs> but let me start with you. You started, um, you know, having this conversation with Mark Emery. Give me a sense from you. First time you've obviously met the guy. I, mm -hmm. I get that. What was he like? I mean, good spirits. It was damn early, but he must be so very happy to be back oh, on Canadian he was, soil. He was incredibly pleasant to be around. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's he's it, he's clearly happy to be out of prison. Mm -hmm. He's clearly excited to campaign across the country for Justin Trudeau. And I used the opportunity to ask him a few questions about his wife Jody running for the Liberals, but also I asked him about Mr. Trudeau's position on Israel and Gaza mm -hmm. and what is. What became very clear to me is that this is a man that is very, very libertarian mm -hmm. in, in every sense of the word, truly. I, he's anti-state, he's anti-government. So mm. he, he went on to say that he doesn't support Trudeau's position on Israel, but, but not because uh, he's pro-Palestinian. I think mm -hmm. he actually viewed it as more political jockeying that he had, that he disagreed with. So um, his, his views are clearly not aligned with the Liberal Party, though. Yeah, we're going to get dive into a little bit more on, on the nomination, uh, Justin, and his and his wife, Jody, who has been you know very good friend here to us at Sun News. But uh, your take on the return of Mark Emery, there's going to be uh, a big event. They're organizing an event in Windsor. They're having something at Young Dundas Square. You know, he's come back to a very different, shall we say, uh, political uh, uh, ideology when it comes to pot, marijuana smoking in this country. Yeah, I'm quite happy that he's back. I'm, I'm frankly surprised that any pot smoker can get up at 7 a.m., so good for him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I used to smoke a lot of pot when I was in high school, and I never got up that early. Yeah. Um, but, uh, no, I'm quite happy that he's back. It, it's honestly a travesty that he was even sent to jail in the yeah. States. Let, like, let's be quite clear about what happened here. A couple of years, around 2006, uh, the Americans indicted him for selling pot seeds. So he was not selling marijuana. He was not selling, you know, uh, joints to kids. He was selling seeds for people to grow their own, which is legal in Canada. That mm -hmm. is a legal practice here. Nevertheless, the Americans indicted him and the, and the Canadians deported him. And I think that's honestly a travesty. He was sentenced to five years in prison, which is, is, is completely ludicrous. Well, the, the US we've always said, agency, you, know, you know, Justin, we've always said that sometimes our, our Canadian justice system so lax, murderers don't even get that much time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what's so kind of uh, absurd about all of this. And the USDA, the US Drug Enforcement Agency, even made quite clear that this was a political arrest. In the statement on its arrest, they, they, they basically acknowledged that this was a blow to the marijuana legalization movement which of, you know, ironically is now quite prevalent in the United States, so evidently mm -hmm. it didn't work. But so let's be clear, I, I'm quite happy that he's back, and I think, honestly, I would love for the Canadian government to apologize to Mr. Emery, because I honestly think that he should never have been deported. The Canadian government should not have sent him to the States. Well, this, I mean, this would be going back a couple of governments, because we're going way back into 2005. I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. But let's dive into the politics of this, Justin and Marissa. One of the other questions you asked him was, his wife Jody's potential candidacy as um, for the Liberal Party in the 2015 election. We know that the, um, Mr. Emery, look, he's outspoken, he's controversial, um, you know, he's got a lot of support behind him, but he still has an edge to him that makes politicos uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And so much so that the Liberals have already issued the statement saying, hey, we have no part of this cross-country tour. He's going on a 30-city tour until the next election. They've made a concerted effort to distance this, themselves. There was a big issue, uh, event in Vancouver last weekend. M Jody Emery and Justin Trudeau were both at the same thing. They didn't meet. So I just want to, let's take a look at the clip when you asked him specifically about his wife Jody as a candidate for the Liberals. Let's take a look at that. Jody Emery has um, announced she would like to run for the federal Liberals. Uh, the federal Liberal Party, and specifically Justin Trudeau, has been coy about whether or not he'll give her the green light to actually run. Are you concerned that they may block her? 
Oh, I'm very concerned. There's nothing in her record that would ever get her disqualified as a candidate. It's really me that they're worried about. If the nomination is held legitimately and openly and transparently, as Mr. Trudeau insists it should happen in every riding, uh, then she's going to win that nomination with no problem. But I expect they're going to try and derail it. Justin, I want you to respond to that. You know, it's an absolutely candid comment from Mark Emery about the Liberals potentially scuttling his wife's uh, future political hopes. Uh, I, I think he has a very legitimate concern. I think Justin Trudeau probably will uh, stop that candidacy from going forward, and I think that's uh, hugely unfortunate. Uh, the, you know, Trudeau... I think was more than happy to come out and endorse legalization uh, of, of marijuana. Uh, I, I think it was problematic that he's not quite ready to start campaigning on it. I think it was more of a dog whistle, you know, send it out to those folks who really care about this, but don't do too much because you might upset, you know, the soccer moms and, you know, the stay-at-home dads and all that. Uh, I, I think it's unfortunate. I, I kind of understand it. You know, Stephen Blaney, uh, our Minister of Public Safety, sent out a comment uh, after uh, Mr. Emery's return, basically blasting Trudeau for associating with a drug trafficker and yada yada. Yeah, so, so you I, can see I get the beginning yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. You, you definitely can. So I, I get that to a degree, but, but you know, I really think this should be a matter of principle. I think Justin Trudeau evidently believes in legalization, and therefore he should stand behind uh, Miss Emery's candidacy. I think it's ridiculous that he, that he won't. He's had a lot of issues over the past few months already, uh, Marissa, with respect to these, quote, open, so-called open nominations. We saw it happen in Trinity Spadina and, and um, you know, just rumblings around the grassroots of the Liberal Party. It if he blocks her candidacy, it will fly in the face of his open nominations policy. Yeah. We've seen it happen before, as you just said, with yeah. Trinity Spadina and Christine Ennis because her husband said some really mean things to some liberals and therefore they basically banned her from running. It's interesting how the parallel is there. You know, Christine Ennis is being punished for the sins of her husband and Emery saying his wife Jody's going to be punished for his sins. Well, I, well, let's also be clear though. Jody Emery is also a polarizing figure and so part, insofar as she once protested a Remembrance Day ceremony. Mm -hmm. So there are things that do not align between Jody Emery, Mark Emery, and that of the Liberal Party. So I think that this that wedge between the two might be problematic for Jody Emery, but it's really too bad because this is Justin Trudeau's, the first thing he announced as leader of the Liberal yeah. Party was the legalization of marijuana. You know, it, Justin, it's an important point because when you are a political leader and you're touting yourself as this open, the democratic, and, and all of these, the, the transparency and accountability and all of these things, it's challenging for him because any turn of this nominee nation process, just like we saw the drama with Eve Adams and all of that with the conservatives, every aspect of this nomination process is going to be reported. It will be covered heavily because of the backstory unfolding. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the Liberals are caught in a bit of a bind here. When they initially announced their sort of open nomination process, it was sort of like an open nomination with caveat. Uh, they, they basically acknowledged that they would, be, they would suspend candidacies of folks who don't really match up with their kind of core values, but generally they wouldn't. So uh, but that got spun to mean open in every sense. Mm -hmm. So a lot of Liberal advisors kind of get grumpy because they basically said, you know, we never promised 110% you know, openness in every single nomination. They said in 99% of cases, yes. And, and to give them credit, that's more or less what they're doing. Um, unfortunately, those those issues like Jody Emery's candidacy, uh, you know, it, it's quite unfortunate that they're they're gonna they're gonna bend on this. But on the flip side, it's sort of it's sort of rich for the conservatives to lambast them for you know even for her you know even running for them, and then to turn around and lambast them again for killing her candidacy. They, the conservatives kind of want to have it both ways politically, and the liberals are, are caught a bit. I think they should side on the uh, they, should, they should err on the side of openness, but. Whether or not they do, I guess, is a political decision for them. Big surprise! Somebody wants it. Uh, the political party wants to have their cake and eat it too. Yeah, I mean, fair. It but works in both senses for the yeah. conservatives. But I want to be way. clear about one thing because when it comes to the legalization of marijuana, a recent study indicated that only one in three people want it legalized, and an even more recent study indicated that it was the number one issue for merely 15 percent of the Canadian population. A lot of people want to see some change. Mm -hmm. The conservatives have been open to decriminalization. The NDP are open to decriminalization. It's the Liberal Party. Party that wants full legalization, but they view Jody Emery as a polarizing candidate that might not bode well for them in mm -hmm. maybe ethnic communities or even among elders. For them. Yeah, but no, just wait, there's one thing here to remember. You know, those, those, those polls are interesting, but it also shows that only 25% of people want to keep the status quo or strengthen the laws. You know, only a quarter of the population thinks what we're doing is good. And, you know, the conservatives' uh, kind of indication they were open to lo loosening those laws is, I think, kind of a lark. I mean, governments have been doing this for decades, kind of throwing out the, oh, yeah, we're looking at it, but they're not going to do anything. The fact is that uh, arrests for pot 
possession have gone up a, a staggering amount, something like 30 percent in the last few years. We're now arresting nearly 60,000 people a year for possessing pot. That is ludicrous, and I don't think the Conservatives have, have any willingness to slow that down. You know what Justin Trudeau did on a number of occasions is he stated that 450,000 people have been convicted of pot charges since the since the Conservatives came into power. That number was since debunked. Mm -hmm. So, you know, statistics are very skewed on this. Mm -hmm. Well, this you is know, according it, to police statistics. Well, well, statistics well, well it's not convictions. Char it's different. And we're talking about convictions here, and that's the number he stood by versus people that were just arrested for it. But, uh, but we could be, be talking clear, about Justin. indictable offenses or summary convictions. Minute. Well, let's be clear about one thing, though, because pot marijuana right now is de facto decriminalized. OK, you are, you get nothing more than a slap on the wrist. Yeah, no. And that's the other aspect to this, too, is the larger issue of the, the value that the public is getting on their policing costs. Like, do we want police officers who are just going to, you know, drag somebody in because they're carrying a joint or are you smoking a joint? Of course not. There's better and more important things that they should be doing. The issue becomes is whether or not they're able to, you know, if there's a drug ring, if there's something like that, Justin, I think that's where a lot of Canadians' minds probably are. Um, we're not going to resolve this here, but nonetheless, it's worthwhile having this discussion because the fact is this, going to the 2015 election, I'll say this to both of you. I do not think that marijuana legalization or decriminalization is going to be the number one issue. Justin, it it's not going oh, to actually, be. It, it could be a, a big thing to motivate the youth. Of course, youth don't vote unless pot's involved. <laughs> oh, come oh, on. God. They'll be too apathetic to vote. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they will. I mean, They'll be sleeping like you were when you were smoking pot. <laughs> You know what? It's a, you know this is an issue that matters to me. It matters to a lot of folks. You know, my age. You know, twenty somethings actually care about this. You know, they don't necessarily care about you know CETA or big trade deals. But you know, this is a matter. This is thing that actually matters. And you know, we talk about you know it's just a slap on the wrist. But it's not always a slap on the wrist. I mean, I know a lot of friends who put themselves through college selling pot. If they ever got arrested, they would have you know a charge on the record for forever. You know, that's a big deal. And Mark Emery himself got arrested in Saskatoon for drug trafficking because he passed a joint. Yeah. It that, that, My just keep in mind that, that's in Saskatoon, <laughs> uh, Marissa, last word to you on this one. Well, I think it'll be interesting to see how this plays out with respect to the Liberals. If, in fact, they do block uh, Jody Emery from running, I think that'll be a very bad press for them. All right. Great discussion. Thanks to Justin Ling, freelance uh, reporter, joining us from our Ottawa studio and our Sunday's contributor, Marissa Samkew.